yeah quickly welcome guys i welcome you in today's tutorial so in today's video i'll show you how to design this um online banking website this is a new online bank website so i will put you through step by step on how to get this done okay we are not programming we are not you know coding i will just show you the right steps involved on how to get this done and go ahead and charge between two hundred dollars to a thousand dollars or even two thousand dollars to get this for your clients okay in Naira does about 200k to 500k 800k to design this for your clients okay so i'll guide you through on how to go go about it do you understand so this website comprises of three sections the home page the admin user board and the uh, yeah admin dashboard and the user dashboard right so this is actually the home page this um first page now this is the home page you can see what the home page looks like and when you click on the access account dashboard that's where you can be able to log in that's when users can be able to log into their um account that dashboard right so it requires your account number and the password so let me quickly show you how or uh, let's try logging in let's try logging in so we can see how to go about it so let me let me quickly check if we can go ahead and use this okay this this is actually the admin dashboard right so let me just um go ahead and don't worry, let i'll show you guys how to access the admin dashboard let's just log in this um actually a user that has been created a user account that has been created before so let's try and log in to this user account there's okay let's log in let's log in with this okay with this user account to see to see what the user the what the user that dashboard looks like okay so which was the password was the password there okay this is the password let's see what the user dashboard looks like okay you enter the password to log in okay so click on continue you click on continue okay this account is inactive so let's let's activate this account this account or rather what we'll do is let's just quickly open accounts let's put a fresh account do you understand so to open a fresh account the first thing you have to do is um let's let's you see this section enroll for online banking when you click on it you accept their terms and condition okay accept terms and condition um you can say you can use this um joe last name k we just quickly use this uh which country you can use uh Mostra. you can use extra selected okay um city um let's just use tezas you know this is more like a demo account okay so you can just put in the zip code date of birth use the date of birth house house friends just use any name you know that you want to use phone number this is the phone number you want to use email address the user have to enter his or email address right so that is select you select employment um sorry occupation sorry you select the annual uh, sorry range you know let's let's go with this so when you go down you also select the account type is it a checking account or saving or fees deposit account currency okay this password um you select the password you want to use for your account okay um you confirm password you confirm your password um this 2fa pin that's the pin if you want to initiate the transaction the pin that you would like to use so let me go ahead and use the same pin or uh, okay the pin is meant to be four it's meant to be four so um you select the pin you like to use right so once you have done that you go ahead and choose profile you understand this profile choose profile uh, this profile we're going to use now uh, uh let's let's use this profile okay then go ahead and click on submit okay you see congratulations you have successfully registered okay so once you have done this let's now log in to the admin actually to assess the admin dashboard and uh, this is the so, um to set the admin dashboard is the your domain name slash your my account slash admin slash login okay so let me just quickly log into my admin admin dashboard so you can be able to you know approve this account i'm sorry i think i made a mistake okay uh okay so let me log into my admin dashboard boom this is what the admin dashboard looks like this is what the admin dashboard looks like so you can see the new account we just created okay so you in this section this way you can approve this account you understand you can enable cfa authentication you can suspend the user you can block funds transfer in this section and the cost of this account 
you can send mail to this user it can fund the account right so that's how you go about it that's how to you know perform any kind of you know uh, function on this particular account you can view the details of this account we just created let's open that so you can see hope you've seen that so let's quickly try assessing or logging in rather let's log into this new account that we created let's log in to see what the user login interface looks like right so um, now you will repeat we, we, are, we, we are going to put in the account number we just created and the password that we created while doing the registration okay so when you click on continue we are meant to um sorry John, this account is currently inactive we need to activate this account we need to activate this account so to do that just come back to this section you see this particular section written approve account this approve account section so approve the approve account section just click on that approve account section you see what it showed user has have been activated so after your account creating the account you come and approve the account so just come down to this section uh, which said um, this where is it where is it uh, okay but just make sure you come down to that section that showed approve account approve the user account then they can be able to assess can be able to assess you see the more reason why you're not seeing it here because we have approved it so but if you have not approved it this particular um tick icon will be showing so just click approve account and you'll be able to you know log into the user dashboard so let's try logging into the user, user dashboard right now to see if we'll be able to assess it so click on continue you can see we have been able to log in boom you can see what the user dash dashboard looks like you can see how beautiful this you know inter this site looks like you can see what the interface looks like okay so the first thing you want to do is to fund this account if you want to fund the account how do you go about it so to fund this account um the first what you just do is what you just do is um come down to um where is it uh my account yeah this is my account you can see you can perform all kinds of transactions here you can perform all kinds of transactions so just click on deposit just click on deposit when you click on deposit you can you have seen you are saving how much do you want to deposit they say want to deposit fifty thousand dollars sorry five hundred thousand dollars right so um okay what you have to do is okay you choose front of the check back of the check this is the check okay you have to upload the check you want to you know use for the deposit then the back of the check once you have done that let's just use this as a demo this you know this is actually like a demo so once you've done that you click on submit okay but don't forget don't forget you can see your check has been successfully deposited so as you have done that you can now the admin of the sites can now you know go ahead to approve the deposit right that means can go ahead and approve the deposit so to add, approve the deposit just come down to check deposit okay you can see this is the account we just created and the deposit we just initiated so you can just go ahead and uh, or rather click on approve transaction once you click on approve transaction okay this is the account number account holder name just click on approve you can see it has started processing you can see the check deposit has been approved so let's just reload to see if the money has reflected on our dashboard mm, let's let's you can see boom 500k that's that's really awesome and how responsive this site is so you can also fund the user account if you want to fund a user account you can do that right away very very easy on this section any user that wants to fund his account you just come down to um where is it mm, where is it fund accounts yes click on fund account okay select the um this is the user account so you select the amount you want to create the account with let's say you want to create this account with ten thousand dollars okay you choose the transfer scope if it's an international transfer you know let's let's go with international transfer description we can just use deposits sorry deposits okay you now select the frequency so let's uh, email do you want to send a mail to this user you click on yes once you've done that just go ahead and click on process okay go ahead and click on process and confirm this transaction can see the account has been funded so let's quickly check if the money has reflected you can see five hundred and ten thousand dollars you can see what is showing so that's take that it's not so you can see the money we funded has reflected so that's it that's how to go about it so if the user also want to you know 
enable any kind of transfer just click on transfer okay on the transfer section you just select the uh, uh mouse record you select the accounts is it the service account is it fees deposit you know any kind of accounts that is it including any uh, putting the amounts that you want to transfer let's say you want to transfer uh, twenty thousand dollars then click on continue next step okay sorry uh i think we have okay see our daily limit transfer what we can transfer um, um our daily limit transfer is only five thousand dollars but this can be also in increased we can increase this but let's we have to go with what is here so you just click on five thousand dollars you can increase the daily transfer limits from the admin dashboard that's from this section we can increase that okay so let's go with just our normal what we can work with so when you click on continue you will see um let's click on continue you can see we have been asked to put in the beneficiary account details so you put in the account number let's say uh what's the bank name let's say chase bank um chase bank here yeah. you put in the account number um let's say this is the account number you put in the account number let's say mr joe then let's say what do you want to use for the well this is actually optional so we'll leave it and click on the next step okay you can see the amounts we want to transfer the bank and every other details just click on proceed transfer okay the transfer is in progress you can see processing transaction okay so you can see how awesome how robust this site is with beautiful beautiful features okay so you can see this, this is really nice it's very responsive you can't get this anywhere else okay so we slow in you can see that code is required actually this this VAT code we can we can be able to enable or you know disable this particular feature so how do we get the VAT code to get this VAT code just let's check this out let's view this user account details to see if we see the VAT code here mm -hmm. you can see okay what we have here is actually the IMF code and um, the COT code that's what we have here right now so but let's come down to general settings let's come down to general settings um okay 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 the VAT code okay so this is what we are going to do um let's let's work with the imf and uh Let's work with IMF and COT code instead of this VAT because it's, it's not necessary. It's not necessary at all. So let's go ahead and disable. Let's go ahead and disable all these um, VAT, BOT, BAB, VT. They are not necessary at all. They are not necessary. Let's just work with our IMF and uh, VOT code. Okay, so once you have done that, just click on just click on update. Update this. If you update this now, let's just raise our transition. Let's do this. Mm, let's click on the dash button. Let's confirm this version. Complete transition. Complete transition. Now you can see our transaction has been completed so the transaction is successful but if you still want to use code for it if you if you still want to use code for it that there's no challenge what you would do is you see this section on the admin section what you have to do is you come here you come down this section and enable transfer with code okay you enable the transfer with code the transfer code features okay so let me quickly show you something let me quickly show you something yeah you down here you just come down to this section and click on enable okay you enable this feature just enable this and this okay then update you will see if you want to initiate a transfer now this code will be requested right our system has been updated so let's just quickly check out this you can see our the money we have before was 410 now it has it has been reduced because we made a transfer so let's just quickly reload this and then click on transfer this time around mm, when you click on transfer let's let the account okay this is our normal service account so how much do we want to transfer this time let's say we, um let's go with 5000 again which is our daily limit 
Okay, continue. Sorry. I think actually we have exceeded our daily limits for today. So what we have to do is let's go and increase increase the daily limits for this account. So to do that, um, just come down to this section. Um, view the lo um, client's login. Okay, view view details. Okay. Um, transaction history, debit account activities. Alright, uh, okay, what's happened is I observed that um, regarding to this daily limit, to increase the daily limit actually is from, you know, opening the account. Why open the account? You know, the daily limits we actually selected was $500, sorry, $5,000. If actually we selected something higher than that, we can be able to, you know, initiate more than $5,000 transfer daily, right? So, due to $5,000 was the limit that we selected, that's where we, why we can't be, uh, be able to, you know, uh, modify the amounts we can transfer daily. Okay, we have reached uh, the maximum transfer limit for that day. Okay, you have reached, so to do that, you can be able to widen the registration at first. You can increase increase the daily limits you can transfer. Right now, we have reached the daily transfer limit, so we can initiate another transfer because we we initiated the transfer of five thousand dollar um, before. So that's for it actually. That's for it by the way. So which other feature does this site have? You can see by yourself. You can send money. You can send money, you can um, do initiate cross border transfer, local transfer, you can deposit check. I think we have gone through this. We have, you can pay bills, okay? You can pay bills. Um, let's see what we can do here, okay? You can choose actually, it's very simple. What you have to do add payee, pay a biller, okay? You add the payee, you can do this by yourself, it's very, very easy. You can also initiate payments with cryptocurrency user can initiate payments in this section you'll be able to manage can be able to manage um, you can be able to manage asset deposit assets fears withdrawals uh, so you want to deposit cryptocurrency now well just click on deposits which crypto access let's say you want to deposit with bitcoin you know putting the amounts of bitcoin let's say ten thousand dollars then click on continue uh, you'll be assigned a Bitcoin wallet address where you'll be transferred the Bitcoin to. So, before you do that, uh, you must have modified the crypto wallet address that you want to use to be receiving payments. So, to do that, um, what you do is just come down to crypto management. Okay, which of the assets? Let's say we know we selected Bitcoin. So, you come down here, make sure you update and put in the current crypto wallet you want to be using to accept payment, right? So, you need to take note of that so you won't end up losing funds or transfer money to the wrong account so once you've done that you can now go ahead you know there are a lot of features there's a lot of features that i don't want this video to be too long long so you can go ahead and do that when you're when you're modify once you modify that you can see this bitcoin address will change and that bitcoin address will be here so let's cancel, cancel this order there are also lots of lots of lots of you know there are lots of what's it called feature this site has actually there are kyc you can do kyc verification know your customer right so you can do that at this section what you do is send complete send your um, image whatever 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 the kyc will be done and you now go out to the um, admin section and approve it so you can also apply for a lo loan section on this on this particular page you can apply for a loan so when you click on the loan it's coming up um you'll be able to apply for a loan okay so once you have applied for this loan you give reasons and the admin you just come down to where is it where is it come down to loan please you know any loan that is being applied it will come down to loan request so it comes down to come down to loan, loan request and accept or approve any loan that was applied by your customer so this is a very very robust system very easy and simple very it has lots of lots of lots of features on the account settings the account settings that way that's where you can be able to you know sorry sorry for that so on the account settings where is it? Yeah, this is it. This is the account settings. You can be able to, you know, enable or disable this pin if you want to be, if you don't want to initiate any transfer with pin, you will disable it. If you want to initiate it, go ahead. You can also enable, okay, your save activity. If you want to be saving activities, you can enable this, but it's all disabled here. So it's a very, very robust system. It's a very responsive site. Same comes for the, for the admin section these general settings that's where you can be able to modify whatever that is going on, on your site after the site has been created what you do here is you put in your domain name yes your domain name is meant to be here you put in your site name you configure your site name you know or do all those stuff very easy to be done no 
enable these um, features if you want to disable cryptocurrency feature it disable if you want to enable this IMF just like the way it was disabled here you can also enable it you know actually I wanted to show you guys uh, this is what I was looking for and I actually I wanted to initiate on that payment you know with this IMF and COT code when you, when you enable this feature at that process where we initiated the first transfer this IMF and COT code will be requested and you know, what you need to do if it's being requested it's very, very easy to do it okay so what you do is you come down to you know where you view the client details just view details you can see on these view details the every client has a cot code and imf code that is assigned to him once the account has been created okay you fill in the copy this and put in and go ahead and initiate that initiate that transfer it will go okay so everything is done here just take your time take your time go through it make sure you go through it okay make sure you go through it so on the admin section too you can be able to um what was it called admin section you can be able to you know do some changes here description you can be able to modify the description you want the bank to carry besides address you know you can modify this country blah 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 currency mail you know, you know what should be here what should be here should be your email address this should be your email address that is meant to be here so go ahead and modify this stuff if you want it in a dark background which is my best you click on dark okay we can see when you click on dark now and update it this admin interface will change to a dark interface okay you can see which is my best you have seen that right so that's to tell you how responsive it is the email and sms configuration if you want your clients to be receiving mails what you have to do is come down to this section configure your smtp host you can create one with gmail okay you can create one with gmail not as much as i don't want this video to take much time i would have shown you how to create an smt code but you can check out that on youtube okay uh, I might attach the link on how to decrease the SMT code so your clients will be receiving emails, you know, when they enable this notification. But regardless, once you, if you do this the right way, you definitely be receiving mails and um, every other thing. So you configure this and also the SM, uh, SMS management section, you can configure the API. You know, if you have one, you can create one with Gateway API. Okay, you can create, create one with them. And also the Twilio API, you can also configure that too. So you can see this is a very, very robust system. So quickly, quickly, let me show you guys how you can be able to get this done. Okay, to set this, to get this done, firstly, you need to purchase your domain and hosting as usual, right? Purchase your domain and hosting. You can get one from NetChip or Bluehost. Once you've done that, after purchasing your domain and hosting, you'll be assigned to your cPanel. And your cPanel, that's where you can be able to log into your, um, your cPanel and get this done upload and modify whatever that you want to do on your website so actually i already have my own cpanel so let me quickly show you guys how to upload this file so come down to file manager and file manager section you what you have to do um come down to public underscore html after your purchase your domain name and hosting you upload this on directly on public public underscore html after your purchase your domain name and hosting but due to i want to use this for a practical purpose i'll go ahead and create a folder under my public underscore html so what i'll do is come down to create folder okay what's name well where i like to use for my um okay let me say i want to use um, um let me say let's say i want to use bank bank backland okay let me use backland let me say i want to use this for my folder right so i'll click on create folder you can see Mm, let's see if the you can see the background folder that we just created has appeared so i'll go ahead and open this folder and upload my file okay i'll upload my file okay so let me quickly come down to let me locate my file let me search for it down here start way yeah this is it so highlight then open so you can see my file is loading up already let me pause this video so it won't take much time as you can see the the our file has fully uploaded make sure it turns to green before you go ahead and go to back you know make sure it turns to green very very important so we have successfully uploaded our file so let's unzip this file okay just click on highlights click on um, extract right extract this file okay click on extract files okay we have successfully extracted our files so let's reload this let's quickly reload this you can see the main file itself you open this highlights and move this to the folder that we created right if actually you're uploading on the right um public underscore html you're meant to you know is edit so you get to this public underscore html then you move the files on this particular um, um public underscore html but this i created the folder for it 
how we move this file to the folder that I created, which is bank land. So we click on move files. Okay, so let's click on back. Let's go to back and you can see all the files. These are all the files. Okay. Then let me be very sure. Come down to public XML, then backland, then be very sure. Okay, you can see all the folder that we created. Now, what you have to do now once you have done this, let's go ahead and create what we call a database for it. Let's let's create a database for this file. So to create a database is very easy. What you do here is search for um yeah database wizard you know and is this one and is it this one let me it should be my sql database wizard yes this is it this is it so there's a bank what let me use bank sorry let me use bank db db for my database name then click on next here you create the database user let me use bank um, bank user Okay, password, the password you want to use. You can use this password generator to generate your password. Okay, which password? Uh, let me use something. I don't need symbols. I don't need symbols. Let me let me use this. Okay, let me use this. Make sure you copy this. Let me copy my password. You can save, copy this password, save it on your notepad. Okay, you can copy and save on your notepad. Very, very important. Don't make this mistake. Make sure you copy out your password. Okay, then you go ahead and click on use password. Okay, so once you've done that, you click on create user. Okay, once you've created your user, make sure you come on, uh, you come down to this section, and copy your user um, database name and the user, uh, the, user uh, the database user too, the database user name to make sure you copy these things, highlights, because you definitely need it. You need it at some point. So once you've done that, you come down to select all privileges, then scroll down and click on next next step come down you can see we have successfully created this database so let's quickly um search let's come down to php my admin to see if this database that we created has appeared on our php my admin definitely i know it's appearing so but let's see let's see this is my actually this is my host this is my host so you can see this the new database that we created Sorry, bank DP. I hope you have seen that. So click on it, then import, import, choose the file, SQL file. After you have extracted your software, your SQL file is meant to be on the database. This is the SQL file. Select and open. Okay, once you've done that, come down to this section and click on import. You can see very easy. Do it the right way, it will definitely work out for you. So you won't have any issue because this is very, very easy to get done. Okay, we can see we have imported our we have imported our you can see it has imported in our database so once i've done this you now come down to um, let's, let's let me close this let's search for um, okay let's configure the password database username password that we created while in the while creating the database itself so to so configure that just come down to your public contacts html you know where your where you uploaded your file to okay then select my account select my account and select my account come down to select script then come down to search for connect uh, what's it called connect.php yeah this is it right click edit you want to configure the database okay you have to be very very careful in this section you just be very very careful and um, take it the username Here's the username we created. You can see this is the user. Highlights. Make sure you highlight. Don't don't write this thing by your hand. Just highlight so you won't do any mistake. Okay. Then paste. Okay. Where's the other for the password? This is our password. Highlight. Copy to. Then. Paste. As for the database name, this is our database name. You have to copy that. Come down to this section. Paste. Okay, you can see we have done that. You be, be very careful about it. Then, all right. So we have successfully you know, configured our database. So now let's now go ahead to let's go ahead to load our site. 
let's go ahead to build our site. So to accept our site, it will not be um, um, the site name slash backland, right? But let me copy this. In yours, uh, in yours, just what you have to do, you just open up your what's it called? In your own, just open up your site name, okay? Then load up. It's open. Do you understand? It's open. So uh, this is actually my site name, um, okay? Slash backland. Okay. Let's see. Boom! You can see our site has opened. You can see so. Um, you need to bypass this security. Just type in the number your sh that is displaying. Um, okay. So far, then verify. Okay. Click on verify. You can see verification successful. This this is really awesome. So just for this step by step, you able to you be able to get it done as simple as whatever you can think of. So you can see how we have been able to get this done. So let's say let's do some changes. Let's say you want to edit. No, let's say you want to edit the site name and some other stuffs to get that done. It's very easy. It's very easy. So let's say you want to edit this one page. You can see the domain. Our domain name is this. Can this? You can see this. Our domain name slash home. Okay. Let's say you want to edit it. What you have to do is, uh, firstly, uh, let's go ahead and edit some certain stuff. Um, what you have to do is go ahead and to back, go back to your public underscore HTML. Your public underscore HTML. Just come down to where is it? Mm, where is it? 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 Uh, where is our home? Okay, sorry, our folder first. This is this our folder. This our folder. You open this folder, then come down to home. Where is home? You can see home.php. Highlight edit. Let's say you want to edit. Um, let's say you want to edit the 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 home page actually. Um, what what are we going to edit in this home page now? Um, firstly, just click on Control F. Control F. Um, now let's go back to our side. Let's see what you want to edit. Let's say you want to edit. Um, the card um, okay mm. let's say once you did this section now let's say once you did this they just highlight this let's see that's what we want to do you can see this plan hope you have seen that so you can just go ahead and just edit Instead of that, um, let's let's say we want to replace it with um, what's it called? What is it? Okay, let's say we, this particular section. Let's say we want to replace it with this. Let's say we want to replace it with this. Just copy. Or you can type. You can type. But I don't want. I just want to be as fast as possible. Just paste. Then save. Now let's see what we have edited. Because let's see if it has taken effect. Let's reload this site. Let's go down. Hope you've seen that. It's a change. Before it was less planned to, you know, blah blah blah. Now it's a change. So that's how you edit. It's very simple. Anything you want to edit, just you know, open your f um, the file itself. Let's close this. Open the file itself. If you want to edit the contact contact us page, this is the file contact.php. If you want to edit the footer footer, that's the down of the site, the footer, the header. Open this file, edit just like the way I showed you guys. Do you understand? It's very very easy. It's very easy. If you want to also edit the about us page, the uh, any just edit this page. So with this example that I showed you, I believe you should be able to get it done. Something else that you need to do very very important is on this on your public underscore HTML, try and upload this file. Try and upload this file. Okay. Let me open my folder. When you open the folder, make sure you upload this file. Don't forget. Um, HTML is download. Where's my file? Um, you see, HT access. Make sure you upload this file. Don't forget. They, they ask you if you want to replace. Say yes. You might, if you don't upload this file, you, you might face some issues like 042 error issues. But when you upload, upload it, you won't have any issue like that. So that's how you can be able to edit any page. Okay, let me quickly show you how you can be able to change the logo. Let's say you want to edit the logo now. Right click, copy, copy the image address. Let's um, paste this thing. This is how you change any logo on your site. You can see to locate this logo, this logo is on my account folder slash logo.php. Quickly, let me show you how to edit that as fast as anything. It's very easy. That's for my step. So, what you have to do is um, let's come down to this section. Where's my account? Uh huh. Is it my account? 
let's say you want to change the uh, account you see this is the logo to php so what you have to do is just just click on when you click on it when you click on it come to upload okay upload so let's find um where is it mm, let me say let me search for logo.php then i think i have the logo that i want to use okay let me use this logo make sure make sure make sure it has the same name it must be logo.php or less you can see you have been asked if you want to you know override this file you kind of replace it with this logo and make sure the folder name is saved the the logo you want to use it for make sure it's, it's in this name logo.php or less if it's in another name is the, the picture is carrying another name it won't be able to you know work it won't work or less in the name but just follow it this way if you don't have any issue with it let everything be smooth now let's quickly see if our logo has changed okay let's reload this site to save our logo has changed. boom very easy very very easy just flow work with me you'll be able to get things as fast as possible smart work you don't need let's see if it has changed our site okay you can use ctrl f5 for hard refresh use ctrl f5 for hard refresh boom you can see it has changed very very awesome i like this 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 is really awesome this is really awesome this is really awesome now quickly something else something else um let's say you want to create let's say you want to create an admin mail admin mail for your website you call it admin you can call it admin mail or custom mail what you have to do is where is the email account yes come down to email account after you purchase your minimum hosting your minimum hosting will be here so just click on create okay the, the admin mail is always you know the name you want to use at your domain name or let's say i want to use support or let me say i want to use admin let's say i want to use admin at my bank name you can generate password just click on generate and click on create this is how to create custom mail as simple as whatever you can see this uh custom mail admin at your bank mail.com that's how to create it so after you've created this mail you can now you can now go ahead to you can now go ahead to um do this what's it called you can now go ahead and modify it on your admin page uh you can go and there and modify it on your admin page okay very very important um and this, this on the admin portal this way you can be able to update any if you want to update your bank name your admin name and some other stuff but where that where the, where that mail is needed the most is on this general settings you can see this email you put it on this section our website name you copy this is our site name right so mm, there's it This is our site name. So let's say you want to use Bankland. Um, so just go ahead and modify this. Once you're done doing any your modification, just click on update. Just click on update. It's very very easy. You can see settings has been updated. As simple as that. Okay, as simple as that. Something else I would like to show you. You might be like, how do we access after creating the site has been updated? How do we access the admin? end right so to access your admin end to access the admin end is always your domain name slash my folder slash my accounts slash admin that's how you access it okay very very easy where is it okay 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 let me copy this then where's my own site this is the you know this is the one i created you have seen it my domain name slash the folder that i created which is backland then paste my account slash my admin this is how you assess it boom you have seen it has taken notes to the admin end right this this is really 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 responsive so you put in the email address um let me put in my email address then put in my password click on continue boom hope you've seen it thank you very much okay thank you very much so if you want to get the script that was used in designing this site and go ahead and charge as high as 500k to over a million to get this done for your client just click on the link below this video click on the link below this video to get the scripts okay don't forget to like 
you know, turn on your notification. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe so you won't miss out on important updates like this. Okay, very, very important. So that is it. Remember, you, you guys might have questions like how can I accept, how can I get into this C panel? How do I create a C panel account? How can I be able to get to, to do that? It's very easy. Sign up for a NetChip account with um, Nemchip.com. You can use Nemchip.com. Uh, um, this is Nemchip. Um, you can use this Nemchip by a domain name and hosting. Host your site. Okay. By, to buy a Nemchip, you just come down to this section. Let's say you want to use SLBC.com. Just click on search. It's very easy to buy your domain name and hosting. But before then, make sure you sign up. You can see this sign in and sign up button. Make sure you create an account with them. You can see this site is available. But if you want to buy it, just go ahead and click on Add to Cart. Okay. Once you've done that, you check out. Watch. You can watch a video research how to buy domain name and hosting. After buying, they will assign a simple panel to you. Okay. So research on how to do it. Okay. Check out this uh, section where you have to make payments for the domain name. Okay. Adding a hosting to it. And let's add a hosting to it quickly. Let's add a hosting to it. Um, so to add a hosting to it, just come down to hosting, then select shared hosting. Okay, you select the hosting plan that you want to use. You can see, you can see this is actually, uh, you can see for one year, you can see the features available. Two dollar monthly. Okay, you be paying two dollar monthly for this particular plan. You, this, for this particular plan, you be paying four dollar monthly. So you go for the one you can afford. Let's say once you get started with this, you can see how much we we'll be spending. Okay. Okay. You can see just select if you new domain. Yes, this right. This is the domain. SCBN net. Hope you have seen it. Sorry. Hope you have seen it. This is the domain that we selected. This is our hosting plan. Click on Add to Cart. Okay, this add to cart. You can see this is the amount we are meant to pay. You can see the domain registration very easy. Okay, this is the domain price we'll be paying for it for a year. Right? If you want to select for two years, you also select it. Okay, if you want to auto renew, blah, blah, this is the hosting plan $58. Total of everything is giving us $68. So when you click on confirm order, you'll be, you know, if actually I've already have an account, so I would have been logged in, then it will take you to be a page where you make payments, you're adding your bank card, um, you know, your, your credit card, then once you do that, boom, you will receive a mail. If the transaction was successful, you receive a mail containing your admin username and password, sorry, your cPanel username and password, then they will also send you a link to access your cPanel, okay? So it's very, very easy. So if you have any other issue, if you want us to get this done for you, click on the number on the description box or the number displayed on the video, hit me up, I can be able to get this done for, for you. If you need any assistance, any kind of script, any kind of website that you need for your clients or just hit me up, okay? I'm here to assist you. I can put you through step by step, walk you through on how to go about this, okay? So thank you very much and don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video. If you find value in this video, hit the like button and follow us for more tips, okay? So thank you very much for this and have a very nice day.